following your name, right? You follow your name? Yeah. Okay. I gonna tag you. Six one oh six, NASA, the Bahamas. It's time for your lane with Coach Trishanna. Yeah, it's time to empower him. Your women to load up, baby, you through. Whatever you've been going through, we can talk about it. We ain't passing no judgment. So don't be ashamed. It's all the same. Stay in your lane. Your lane. It's whatever your real life looks like. Stay in your lane. Come out the dark and don't be ashamed. Your lane. Let's have a conversation on what we face every day. Tune into your late talk show. It makes us feel good just to know we're not alone. No more will be nice and late and it gets the side. I want you to come out the door. Just don't be afraid of your heart. So don't be ashamed. It's all the same thing in your lane. Your lane. It's whatever your real life looks like. Stay in your lane. Come out the dark and don't be ashamed. Your lane. Let's have a conversation on what we face every day. It's your lane talk show with Coach Trish Hannah. <laughs> Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone to your lane talk show with your girl, Coach Trish Hanna. Happy Sunday to each one, each and every one of you. It's rainy. It's rainy. It's a rainy Sunday, but guess what? We're still here. We're still alive and we can still give God glory. If you are joining us for the first time, we want to uh, want you to know that your lane talk show was created to educate, encourage and empower women of all ages. Last month, we focused on building and restoring healthy marriages. This month, we're focusing on singleness. Now, someone who is single is someone who is not married or someone who is not with a significant other or in a strong or intimate relationship with anyone, whether by choice, by divorce, or by death. And we will be covering all of this, all of that this month. But today, we want to focus on divorce. Um, during my preparation for today's show, I have discovered that there are some high-risk periods of divorce um, in marriage. We saw some statistics here, and they said between the years of one, years one and two, and seven and eight, um, are those that are in high risk. That are the high-risk periods, rather. Um, and these two years, in particular, stand out and to be most common years for divorce, um, especially seven and eight, because they call year seven the year, the seven-year itch. Now, that's what the world says. That's not the statistics. Um, what I would honestly do to those who are in the kingdom, y'all know that every year is a hitch, itch, 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 yeah. <laughs> so what you do is you just continue to pray over your marriages. You continue to um, pray over whatever it is that you're going through, whether it be year one, year 15, year 20. I don't care. It doesn't matter. You just pray. You pray against that spirit. I can tell you, I've been married for 15 years, and in my all of the years that I've been married, I think this year for me has been one with the most turbulence, I think. And in doing that, there are times when I felt as if, hey, listen, you sure you call me God? You sure that's what I'm supposed to be doing? Um, you know what I mean? What's what's happening here? What's what's going on? I'm, I'm questioning. I'm doubting myself. And to be honest with you, both he and I are believers. We hold on to Jesus' hand, you understand, but then we still have turbulence. So year one year two year three year 15 year 25 there will always be some turbulence going on but the fact of the matter is hey am i gonna stick with it am i gonna stay or am i gonna just bounce you know and when i use the term just bounce there are reasons for us if there is um a reason especially in the kingdom i would say uh abuse is one i would say um neglect and most importantly infidelity but no matter what, I would always recommend that you speak to the father and ask him, how should I proceed, you know, in this particular situation in my life? Is it is this the time that you're telling me, hey, let me just separate from my spouse for right now until he gets it together? Or are you saying, look, let me just dip out now? Because sometimes dipping out now require making sure that your life is in, intact, okay? Because there are marriages and relationships where it's so bad that you have to go no matter what. 
All right. And so for those who are listening, I ask that if there's anyone that you know who've been divorced or in the process of divorce, someone who's separated, whatever that situation may be, somebody who's just experiencing turbulence at the moment, tag them, um, ask them to go to channel 976 on cable if they don't have a radio in their home. Those <clears throat> who may be who may be on Facebook, you can go to your lane live coaching. And let's see if we can get some things done. Let me help you out here. That's another statistic that I want to share with you, some other statistics. The lack of commitment is the leading cause of divorces, uh, with 75% of couples citing it as the reason for their separation. This is followed by infidelity, which is 59.6%, and too much conflict and arguments, 57.7%. Meanwhile, some married couples divorce because of domestic violence, which is at 23.5%, and then financial problems at 36.1%, and substance and abuse, yes, substance abuse is an issue, at 34.6%. So we welcome you today to your lane, uh, episode 29, Divorce, How Did I Get Here? And today's sponsor is brought to you by Airborne Freight and Cargo Services, John Shoe Store and Accessories, Lowe's Wholesale, Your Lane Life Coaching, Family Medicine Center, Fusion Superplex, and Jari's Babysitting Squad. My predictions, y'all, my predictions for today, my, uh, my emotions today, I think, would be 80% 80, 80 serious aha moments, 0% laughter and 20% tear drops. I think today is going to be quite sober. It's going to be a sobering day. If if there is any laughter, that's probably because I, you know, just so happened to find something to laugh at. But it's a sobering topic, you know, but we'll see what happens. Um, once again, you can view us on your lane talk show on Facebook, on your lane live coaching's page, or Star 106 FM's Facebook page, or you can listen to us on channel 976 on cable. You can view the past shows on YouTube. Just look up Coach Trish Hanna. Please like and subscribe. Enter to win one of five dental cleanings. Purchase ten dollars or more of any Listerine products and WhatsApp your receipt to eight two six six one two zero. It's as simple as that. WhatsApp eight two six six one two zero. Your receipt to uh, that number if you purchase ten dollars or more worth of Listerine products, and you will receive one of five dental cleanings. This is brought to you by Lowe's Wholesale. Now. I want to introduce our guests, but in fact, I think it's better for them to introduce themselves because we want to hear your name. We want to hear what you do. We want to hear if you have children or not. Um, let's 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 start to my left here, um, next to me, my beautiful. She's gonna say. I'm not gonna say. You tell us your name. Tell us what you do. Tell us if you have kids, and tell us how long you've been married before you, you divorced. Okay. My name is Lernice Williams. I'm 40 years of age. Uh, I run accounting. I work, have a banking background. Uh, I've been married for a year and a half, two years max, before I bounced. Before you, <laughs> before you bounced. Good evening, everyone, and to my listening audience. Thank you so much, Coach Trish, for being here. Uh, my name is Cedrica Pratt. I'm a banker by profession. I have a 17-year-old son, um, and my marriage would have lasted about a year and a half. About a year and a half. Wow. Wow. <laughs> okay, I think I'm young woman. Like and I didn't have a choice. Yeah. A year and a half, and... <laughs> I left a year and a half, but I was the boss at two years. At two years. Wow. Wow. See, this thing was saying that one year, that two, one or two years, then you have to be really, really... And, and so I don't, once again, I don't want to go by statistics, but just numbers don't lie, right? Mm -hmm. So what happens in situations where we find ourselves um, in in that turmoil or turbulence mm -hmm. during our marriage um, in the first and the second year? And what I want to do is I want you all to, let's break the ice. It's similar to what I did last week. And I asked how you met. Now, we ain't trying to take some... <laughs> We ain't trying to take the, the band-aids off the scar. <laughs> but it's some, this, this is really actually going to just cause us to just transition into how we get to this point. But let, let's start from, said minister, can I say Minister Cedrica or just Cedrica? doesn't matter. Whichever one you're comfortable Minister with. Cedrica. <laughs> um, let's, let's hear how you met your husband, your oh, ex-husband. Okay, so um, June of 2017, um, actually, um, we met via social media. Mm -hmm. um, we were always Facebook friends, and um, 
literally one night I literally had a dream um, that literally placed us together. Like this complete stranger. I only knew him from, um, you know, being a Facebook friend, but like didn't know like anything really about him. Mm -hmm. And I had this dream um, one night um, that placed us together. And in the dream, there were some specifics. And so when I woke up out the dream, I was like, why is me and this person in this dream together? Like we're together mm -hmm. in a relationship. And um, when I got up that morning, the Holy Spirit said to me, go and tell him the dream. Mm -hmm. Now, first of all, I'm like, hold up, what? This man will begin saying, I crazy, or I have some fetish, or I is a stalker or something like that. And um, I got up and there were some things that the Holy Spirit wanted me to release to him. So I, I obeyed uh, eventually. And um, I told him the dream, what the dream was about. Did not know that the things that I was led to say to him was exactly what he was actually going through. And once we had that first conversation, honestly, it was like we connected like right away. It was like, it was just this connection and we just started talking. Okay, so that's how you met. Right. Facebook. Join up 2017, right. yes. Right, your message to him. God gave you a message to deliver to him. Mm -hmm. and then after that, y'all connected. Right. And guess what? We have on StreamYard, she's going to say her name. Um, she could tell you all the stress she got just to get to this point. <laughs> she's supposed to be in studio, but some things happened. But I'm grateful that she is still present with us. Um, go ahead, CG. Introduce yourself, please. What you do. Hi, and, um, we go straight into how you met well, this is very interesting. Can you share both one and two? Um, that's fine as we get there, that's fine. Gigi, we can't hear you, so I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna let the producer do what he needs to do. Let's go, Lurnies, how did you meet your husband? Well, my ex-husband, I met him, we worked together. Well, we knew each other, like, when, we, when I went to school, he were familiar with some friends I went to, Gordon Prince William. You were part of the box, the <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Um, he knew some people who were a part of the choir, the Baptist choir, and they attended my school. So I had interaction with him off and on during our teenage years. So when I started working at my old establishment, he it was like a familiar face. So I cling to him, and at that time, I was my mother died, had passed, and he was someone that comforted me and we had a he was hurting because he lost he had a loss also his brother died so we had something in common mm -hmm. that we felt comfortable and that's what it bloomed and he also was a believer mm -hmm. you know and he also was in the background where he was married separated from his wife mm -hmm. and you know like something like hers the lord said to me he said um you know, he dropped in my spirit, he said, he could be a candidate. And I said, oh, he could be a candidate, Mark. <laughs> you know, and I said, well, anyway, God, if that's you, he'll come to me. Mm -hmm. And I said that on my knees and I didn't tell anyone because how could I tell someone that this man is my husband if 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 he's married? You know, that's like a no-no. Yeah. So how I could tell people, especially my friends who are Christians, <laughs> who are judgmental, you know? So he came, I went down the trail and he came and he said, I don't know how to tell you this. I was like, two weeks later, I tell me what? And I did, wasn't thinking, I said, what, what is it? Now my mind was someplace else. He was like, oh, I had a dream and the Lord showed me you that you are my wife, but how could that be if I married? So I oh, said to him, I said to him, I said, um, you know what, let's leave it alone and let's pray about it and leave it. And we left it like for a year. Mm -hmm. And next thing I know, he was the boss. Mm -hmm. And I was seeing someone else. And we just been become like friends, just going on catch a ride together. And that's sad. It from, from, from there. Okay. Um, we have with us John Lee or Wally. I know y'all know if those who tune into our sister station, Guardian Radio. He's the producer on that end. Uh, Tony and Beats are unavailable. So John Lee, I don't know if you could help me on this end, but my other guest is uh, waiting to speak as well. So can we get her in? 
at her side. CG, if you can hear us, can you can you hear me? Her, um, mute. Can you unmute and see if you could speak? See, so we can hear you. Can you hear me? Can you see if she's moving? Can you hear me? All right, so we'll deal with that after the break. So let's move on. Mm -hmm. Let's move on. So that's how you met. Yes. And according to you, the Lord put in your dream that this husband, this man was going to be your husband. He didn't and put, he, I, I dreamt. You dreamt that. Yes. You wouldn't say that it was the Lord. I would say that God gave man choices. Right. That's my belief. Right. Um. He It presents. And then I said, God, if this, you or this something could be, then you need to bring clarity to me. Right. Because I questioned it. And I was mm -hmm. like, who's married? Yeah. Yeah. That's somebody, yeah. you know. And I just get to the place where I left it. Mm -hmm. I left it alone and I said to myself, in really, God, then you do. I didn't put no thought to it. Yeah. And like I said, two weeks later, he came and he questioned. He came to me mm -hmm. and he wasn't fresh or forward. And he's like, he's questioning too. And I said to me and him, well, him and I at the time, we said, you know what? Let's leave it and let God have his way. Right. And we never interact. We also had a third person there. We never talked about it. We never, you know, he'll talk. He never even brought his situ present situation to me. Mm -hmm. And I was grateful for that. Um, no. Okay. Um, producer, I'm being told that they can hear CG clearly. They're saying they can hear CG, but we are unable to hear. Be, be patient with us, please, um, as we have Wally from Guardian Radio. <laughs> <laughs> on with us our regular producers are um unavailable at this moment so let's see what wally can do wally would that require headphones for me i know sometimes tony does that hmm? cg can you talk again for us certainly good night everyone yeah huh? so can i have your headphones now how can my guest hair <laughs> Wally, please make it happen. Hi, CG. How are you? Wonderful. Thank you. It's been awesome. I'm just happy that I can hear you. I'm sorry that my guests can't hear you at the time. If Tony was here, then he would have been able to hear you. But I'm not rubbing it in and I'm not throwing shade. So I'm so happy that you are present with us. We're going to find a way after our first break. We're going to find a way after our first break. But I'm grateful that you're here. And can you just introduce yourself to us and uh, uh, let us know? You know what you do how many children you have how long you've been married for and of course you can mention if you want to both situations please okay not a problem once again good night everyone and my name is cj mcfall um, i am currently in commercial sales i have two sons and they are my world ages four well going on 14 and the youngest is 10. And I would have been married for four years um, out of seven with um, my soon to be ex husband now. <laughs> mm. Yes. Okay. All right. So, you know, we, we tried to break the ice. I feel so bad. I don't know how we can do it. On that break, <laughs> we're going to find a way for you so that everyone else can hear you in the studio. But we okay. want to know uh, how did you first meet? Okay, and very good question. Okay, when I first met my my person, uh, my soon-to-be ex-husband, I we was actually in the church. Sorry, sorry, oh. we just John John Lee doing some stuff in the studio, <laughs> so y'all can hear her now. Praise the Lord. Go ahead. Okay, honey. perfect. Okay, so I would have met my soon-to-be ex-husband in a church setting. It was a church that I'm a part of and he actually came there to preach and it was a powerful service as a matter of fact and it was a very impactful service and shortly thereafter after a series of other services he noted to my covering my head the the pastor of the church that the lord said that i'm his wife and i wasn't informed of this on the onset, but he told me privately. And I relayed the same with my ministry head and we discussed it. And we then went through our process of 
being together and just preparing for marriage. I, I like how that sound though. That sound like an, a, a prearranged type arranged type yeah. marriage. I like, I hear you say, what did God say to you? Did God say anything to you? Well, that's just it. It's a very interesting dynamic. Whereas I'd never been ex in place in a situation like that before. Right. And so that definitely was a learning experience from the beginning straight to the end. Hence why I'm here. Okay. Guess what, ladies? I didn't have a chance to because, you know, everyone came in at different times and I don't mind sharing this now. I want you to be, I know that you are, all of you are God-fearing women, all right? And I, I've heard a little bit of each of your stories. That's the reason why I brought you here together, all right? But I want you to be as transparent as possible because some of these things that may be shared today, you will not be able to hear in church. And mm -hmm. some people are just too ashamed who may have been through the same thing to share. So I want y'all to be honest. I want y'all to be real. I want y'all to be open. And I want you to understand that healing also comes with compassion. All right. And so we we come here today, not only for ourselves, this ain't just for a show, this ain't just for numbers. This is nothing. This is to break, you know what I mean? P persons who are hurting. There are some people, even in my preparation for this, it was heavy for me because there are some people who are going through it and don't know what to do. There are some people who, who are experiencing it and thinking about suicide. There are some people who are experiencing it and just have so much hate bottled up in them that they can't even function properly. So we ain't come here to play games today. I need y'all to be open. So if you can't be open, and I know all of three of you are because I know y'all. Mm -hmm. This is the time. Let's make it happen. So one of the things I'm going to start with um, Minister Cedrica. When was, oh, what, can you tell us what your first red flag was what was the first red flag for you okay so my situation is was uh, technical in a sense so we met June 2017 um I lived in the Bahamas he lived in Florida of, of course I, I noticed all of us have stuff in common that these were all men of God or yes. men in the church that's one thing I noticed um and so by December 2017 of that same year we had already uh, we was engaged and we was already married so, so we met in June. We met in June. I got engaged in August or September, and by December we were we were married. Right. Because we were two people that we said we both said that we heard God. Right. Yes. Concerning it. Okay. Um. After going through so many, uh, after going through you know relationships prior, that was the first thing I said to God. I said, God, I don't ever want to go through a divorce. I guess God had other plans, but nevertheless. Um, the very thing the Bible says that I fed the most was the very thing that came upon me. You know, after going through so much, you know, in, in relationship in previous years, nobody wants to go into a marriage wanting a divorce. Uh, no. Nobody wants that. No. We were two people that said, even though people said, you know, of course, we know church people said, why are you getting married too soon? You know, you, must be, you must be having sex. Of course, I don't know why people just jumped to that, that you're fornicating and you're rushing. And I was, you know, it was said that I was pregnant and all of these different stuff. So for it to make sense, I left the Bahamas uh, to, of course, I have a new life now, so I have yeah. to leave and follow my husband. Um, so he was starting a ministry at that time. I left my job. Um, I was doing well in my old banking job. You know, just, I was I just gotten a promotion. Um, I was doing well in my former church, you know, and I left everything to follow him, um, December. I came back home in, well, March and May of 2018 because I left my son to finish school. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to just okay. uproot him and just, and so when I came back to the Bahamas, because my paperwork, we did not, we, we had not started the process of the paperwork. So when I was returning back to Florida, I ended up getting stuck. So that was the first thing. Um, and I felt like, because I, I was telling him, you know, we should go and speak to someone to at least you know find out the process because mm -hmm. you know when you get married um all your finances and everything you know but i said to him i said you know i think you should go and talk to someone let's see what we need to do yeah. i think had we spoken to someone they would have said well don't let her travel whatever so initially when it first happened i blamed him i was upset i was like you see i told you you should have so that was the first thing so you know being a newlywed you weren't expecting something like that to be away from your husband 
and you already far apart because I in the Bahamas and he's in Florida. So in, in the midst of all that, we know that the U.S. could take however long they want to take yeah. for that process to finish. Sometimes people say when you are close up into something, you can't see. Exactly. But when God pulls you apart or away from something, mm -hmm. so you begin to see. And so I felt like, the, I to me, I felt like, hey, you're dragging your foot when it comes to trying to get me home. I see the zeal for, you know, you uh, starting ministry and doing all of these things. But I feel like, okay, your, one of your main concerns should be trying to get me home. So I was upset. I blamed him. That was our first argument. Um, he felt like, you know, it was God's doing. I felt like it was a plan of the enemy because like, how mm -hmm. could this be? You know, you, you were married before. He was married before. And now all of a sudden now we, what is this? God, what are you doing? Like, what is this? And so in the midst of all of that, you know, some situations started to happen. Some things as a woman, I began to notice and I began to, you know, because I'm a strong woman. I began to see some things that I was uncomfortable with. And I began to, you know, how, how we, we go. Yeah. So that's how it started the process of, I guess, what transpired with ending up in a divorce. There's just so much in between, and we can't get into all of that. Because, But yeah, that's that's basically how it started. Okay. Guess what? I'm going to take a break because I want y'all to get into it, especially <laughs> these breaks. Now, the good thing about being on Facebook, right, <laughs> which I advise everyone who's listening uh, via radio to go on, is that some of the things that may we may not be able to share on the radio, we share in on Facebook. All right. So let's take a break right here. And um, we're going to hear the rest of the story. I will know the in between. <laughs> I will know the in between. Yeah. All right. Let's go. <laughs> Okay. All right, so Cedrica. Minister Cedrica. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> um let, let's talk. Let's talk the in-between because we're at, when I get back on my break, I want to allow Lernice and CG an opportunity to share their red flags. So let's move on with you. So so that was your first red flag, the fact that he was trying to get you over to him. Well, that's how I felt. Right. He didn't feel that way, but right. I felt that way. Right. Because I saw this zeal for ministry. I saw this zeal for everything else, and I was like, okay, but where's the zeal? Where's the same zeal to get me home? Mm -hmm. so, oh, we, okay. we, so we disagreed. When it came to that, um, you know, like I said, again, when you are away from something, you begin to see right. that became like one of our biggest arguments because I felt like it was the plan of the enemy because how could this be? We just newly read. What is this? Did someone did someone report me? Mm -hmm. How I get stuck? Hmm. You know, and um, one of the things I would say that uh, being in it, like I said, one of the first arguments again was. <clears throat> The fact that I began to see him with the zeal, and then of course I can't travel, mm -hmm. so you have to you have to come to me, and so there were some concerns that I saw even with, you know, some of the friends, some of the friendships that he had, um, some things that I was like uncomfortable with, mm -hmm. that sometimes often caused us to buck heads, mm -hmm. and it was like we could not certain things like like we could not see eye to eye. Mm -hmm. There were some things that I saw that made me feel uncomfortable in terms of some friendships that he had. That it, it was like to me it felt like he didn't know how to draw the line mm. it felt like to me like persons had more say than i did as a wife so can i ask you a question um did you do any form of premarital counseling prior to yeah we did but because everything happened so quick, quickly we didn't do the full thing because mm -hmm. again we are two mature adults who said and believed that we heard god one and then we had many confirmations on top of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Okay. We, I can talk to you for that. <laughs> I can talk to you for that. 15 seconds. All right. We're going to talk about that. Um, I can't wait to share. <laughs> I can't wait. I'm going to have a <clears throat> talk to the audience moment about that. Because sometimes we confuse. <sighs> That's, I come back on. <laughs> Thank you. 
Welcome back. Just before our break, uh, we had Minister Cedrica sharing her red flag in reference to the boss, how she gets to this point. And if you're just joining us, uh, welcome to your lane talk show with Coach Trish Hanna. We're speaking about the boss. Uh, the topic is the boss. How did I get here? You know, we're going to have three beautiful, beautiful women uh, discuss their <laughs> journey, what they've been through, you know, how they got through it. You know, and for each of them thus far, each of them said the Lord said, or the Lord, or there was some confirmation in some way that they were supposed to be connected to the husbands that they had. Now, I ain't the Lord, and I hear from him, but, you know, he ain't tell me nothing but them three. So I can't say, well, the Lord ain't tell you. Could it be your emotions? Could it be, you know, your hormones? Could it be, I'm being real now. Could it be the enemy talking because he is talked to? Mm -hmm. You know, could it be these mm -hmm. things that are creeping in you to try to take you away from your destiny? Mm -hmm. You know, I'm going to have a talk to the audience moment about that. But let's move on. What was your red flag, Bernice? Your um, first red flag. Tell you what, my story is a little different from Cedric. Um, the Lord, to me, because my marriage failed, is lack of consonant. Mm -hmm. um, it because when he came, we separated for a period of time. And for him to sort himself out, and I was to sort myself out, um, we got one night of counseling. Because at the time where we reside, the pastor and those was traveling, so they didn't really could have do one night of true counseling. If I had the the length of counseling, I would have still been married today. Mm -hmm. Because believe it or not, even though all our situation was a lot of disagreements. Mm -hmm. Okay, here it is. A young man came with a hurt background. I come from a hurt background. We supposed to come together. Now, remember when I said that we used to talk, we both had grief, we both had a serious loss. Mm -hmm. Okay, we that's what our foundation was. When we got married, we stopped being friends. Mm -hmm. My friends and who I thought was my friends gave me bad counsel. I didn't go to the Christian friends who was married because I was too proud and didn't want them to know nothing of my business. I chose badly. I had where he had friends who wasn't even married and who in tend to be even settled was given him counsel. Wow. So the purpose was it was bad counsel. Yes. And we were broken yes. individual. Yes. And that was the key. How was it now that we are ex? I'm not bitter. When I went through my divorce. He got, allowed me to have my divorce. He said, if that's what you want to do, because the love I have for you, I will give you that. That was not his choice. Wow. From my, after I came out of court, I met him to the bank, and he hugged me, and he stood up in front of everyone, and he said, there's a good woman. Wow. We have good friendship. He still goes around and asks, how is she doing? I'm not in that place of bitterness. I don't know what that is. Mm. I was hurt because I felt like a failure. If anybody know me, yes. I like excellence. Yes. I like to strive. Yes. That's who I am. So to me, I carry that grief more than actually worrying about him. I failed. Yes. Yeah. I, I embarrassed. I mm -hmm. lose. Mm -hmm. They tell me when I, you know, little things back, oh, chain a monk to nothing. I wanted to prove a point. My God. But I had to run for my life because I was going on my mind. Mm -hmm. Because I didn't even grieve for my mother. I didn't grieve what I was going through. See, it's important that if I had the right counseling, and I, I carry the blame. Because... Yes, I could be, we was having sex. We were having premarital sex. So all of that emotion, you understand? God with that. Mm -hmm. We didn't want to rush because he said, we know we in church and we in people calling us to have ministry. He know the word, back it out. He's a good man. I wouldn't tell you that. He's not a bad man. But he needed grooming also to how to be a husband. My God. He come from, born, from, <laughs> from all. he was a person that, he was married before his wife never i've never heard his wife spoke bad about him his ex-wife his first wife up to this day i've never because he's not a bad person just broken individuals yeah get bad counsel mm -hmm. and didn't lack of good counsel yes so that's something i really encourage i feel like sometimes i carry that grief after my divorce that i say you know what i should have done this and done that so i would now meet people and i say if you grew up a pastor or do scratch pastor, y'all know the professional counselor. Mm -hmm. Y'all know, and that's something mm -hmm. that I also ask. Awesome. That's that's hear from CG. CG, um, can you tell us your your first red flag? 
what you noticed, what you felt as if, hey, something, something's not right. Okay. Um, <laughs> with my, I would honestly say at this point, the first red flag would have been, or what I, what I will do instead is just express the journey thereof, if that's okay. Because Go it's ahead, so, I want you to be as comfortable as possible. Go it's ahead. it's so much to unpack, and I just want to add context Go with ahead. this time. Yeah. Okay, so during well, like I said in the beginning, my first encounter with my son to be ex was in a church setting. During that time, I was legally sorry, I was still legally married in my first marriage. Wow. Okay, but I was also very much separated and minding my own business and just doing whatever I needed to do to create um, a level of order in my life during that time. And it was during that season that he came into my life and he came into my life through my spiritual leaders and he expressed to them first what he saw for me and then he expressed to me what he saw for me. Uh, we went through the whole process of him speaking to my family and us, you know, making preparations. But it was in that process that I saw a red flag that I questioned him on. And those red flags that I saw that I questioned him on, it was always a type of answer to impression that, oh, you know, that's just the enemy. And then that's how I also accepted it to be that, okay, this red flag is the enemy. So now let me then all the more, you know, make it to the finish line, which is, you know, the altar. And so it was, it was a lot, it was a lot of red flags that I saw, but my error with those red flags was I mislabeled them. I misinterpreted mm -hmm. the errors all those red flags as oh those are just hurdles where in which it was not wow. it was literally as i needed to accept it to be which was red flag spiritual man of god or not and in that that was the turning point for which it was so funny from i got in and set sail, it was just a matter of time before it turned around to say, okay, let me bring CP back because it just could not work with whatever those issues were. No, she was still talking. Okay. So it's a little delay. I, I listen, I just want to take a moment to say I am grateful for we all being here. Mm -hmm. I, I normally say that at the end, but I have to share it now because it takes a very strong woman to come out and share something like this. I I know I can only imagine how at the beginning of all of this, how as she stated her emotions, how embarrassing it may have been, mm -hmm. um, how confusing it may have been for you, especially if you said, Well, well God. I, you know, I thought you said that this is what is supposed to happen. And so I can only imagine, I can only imagine as, as we all, as women, you know, when we were younger, we pictured a little fairy tale wedding or yes. we picture the happily ever after, yes. you know, especially being young. We don't see, we don't, we've never seen ourselves as statistic, no. you know, a part of the statistics of being divorced because as far as we know, we know the Lord, yes. as far as we know, they know the Lord. So where did we go wrong? Where did we go wrong? And so you were able to share your stories. And in this, you were able to share your red flags. Okay. Um, was there any, I don't know how much you can share with this without having to tarnish anyone's um, reputation in any way. But did you see any other signs of, for instance, narcissism or, you know, being prideful or, you know, any form of verbal abuse or anything like that in the midst of you still trying to get it together in your year, mm -hmm. et cetera, yeah. Yes, I saw both him and I were narcissists mm -hmm. because here it is, I was the one who's the college grad, university graduate mm -hmm. with degrees that he hasn't. Mm -hmm. um, he had a job, I had a higher job. At this point in time, I had a higher position than him. Mm -hmm. So he used to feel 
like I made him feel inferior. You know, it was scary for him. He felt like he wasn't good enough for me. And I never made it easy for him. You know, I made it, you know who my father is, you know who my family is. That's what I'm used to. Um, I feel like I'm pulling you along, you dragging me, you keeping me. So mostly my ex-husband was not verbal abusive. I was the one. I was the one that, because like you said with the fairy tale, I didn't have my mind how marriage supposed to be. It's supposed to be, I'm I'm a person, I'm a planner. Mm. So we go strategically, that's planned. So here it is. I feel like I put my life on a stop, on a hold. You know, I could talk to professional women out there. Of course, you to. understand. You understand me because a lot of them now saying that. Oh, I rather be the my alone. No, I learn and I get over this because I want to be married again. Yes. And this time <laughs> I'm in it to win it. You understand me? Okay. Two minutes. Okay. So I had to take accountability and say, you know, Lenny, you are the narcissist. You are the one who. Um, Went through this. You don't want to belittle him. He never belittled you. you. Every time you try to shut him down, he got to the place where he said to me, he said, I had to go in the corner. And I, I had to run from you. I had to sleep out in my mother's house from you because I feel like every time you use a perfection, even down to the, in the home, I'm a neat person. My house, everything I detail because that's the way I was brought up. Culture, family culture can kill you also. Yes, it mm -hmm. I, my daddy is this. My daddy is that. You need to, you need to line up. I'm used to this. And I, he was living in that shadow and he couldn't be himself. Whereas he, like I said, he had hurt me, wanted to come out that shell, he wanted to blossom. I didn't know him in that way. Oh. I love you. I love your transparency. I love <laughs> the fact that you're honest. I love the fact that you're taking accountability, um, which is actually one of my, one of my um, questions later on. But uh, we're going to take another break, right? But in this break, just before we do, I want to I wanna give do a giveaway for um, someone who may be in the process of divorce or who have the who has divorce uh, a giveaway to fusion two VIP tickets to fusion superplex um, just just because just because I'm not rewarding you because you divorce <laughs> but I'm doing this to say sometimes we just need a break yes. sometimes we just need to just clear our heads and just go and do something. So the number to call is 328-8164. That's 328-8164. Give us a call. The tickets are yours. We're going to take a break. This, this thing right here is not just my hair. It's time to take pictures afterwards. I feel like, <laughs> a picture I had the last time. We're going to break, right? The picture that I took afterwards. My hair sticking up like this and that. I was like, Tony, what happened? You were telling me that. Um, but, man, y'all are just, I just love it. Let's read some of the comments here on Facebook. To, to our Facebook audience, we want to thank you so much for tuning in. Let's read some that start from the top here. Um, okay, persons are saying that they can hear CG. Uh, we have pastors. We have men on live. Thank you so much, men, for tuning in. Uh, someone says, CG, you look so young. <laughs> <laughs> someone, says, someone says, sending love, ladies. I hate the word divorce. And guess what? I hate divorce, too, which is one of my call the reasons why I'm here. Um, and one of my callings is to help to sanctify to keep us um keep the sanction yes. of marriage yes. you know functioning and, and getting us so together good. um this one sound like business deal i don't understand that one i guess i can elaborate um yes. someone says that sounded like a setup from the beginning i guess they're referring to your yeah, situation um is there a way that i can you want to let them hold until we go live? They have a question or they want the, the tickets? Because tickets I could do now. They have a question. Okay, so we'll wait till we go live. You told them that? They ain't gonna hang up. Okay, good. John Lee, he, he, that's what I'm getting used to. <laughs> <laughs> Love you though. Good. Love you though. Y'all know who John Lee is? Look at him. If you put a wig on his head, who he look like? Y'all ain't know? If you put, no. no, if you put a, a wig on Johnny's head right now, who would he look like? Anyone know? Y'all too? Pastor's He's a pastor's brother. Y'all don't know? <laughs> okay. Okay. I ain't gonna say it yet. I can wait till later. <laughs> Yeah. 
Y'all go like, <gasps> and then y'all go see it differently. <laughs> Welcome back. Welcome back, everyone. We have a caller in that said that they had a question, according to, to Wally. That's her. Good evening, caller. Welcome to your lane talk show. Mm -hmm. um, I've heard you know, this talk show, and it was just so intriguing. Thank you. The question that I have um, for the ladies, and, and thank you for your transparency, and Stephen, thank you even for Stephen with this conversation. I think it's something that really needs to be had. But then, how do you begin to trust again? And I know a lot of you, you know, have said that you were Christians and you married Christians. So why do you begin to trust yourself? How do you even begin to trust in, in your ability? Thank you so much for the call. I'm going to allow you to tune in so we can have an opportunity for mm -hmm. us to, to answer. The question I think Louise wants to answer first. Okay. Um, go ahead, Louise. Okay. And of course, she's speaking because of experience. Yes. Um, that's a good question. Excellent. Question. Um, and that is the truth. But what my method, what I did is I start to do self healing. I start to work on me. I start to close some doors from. You have to go deep as backwards as from your childhood. What hurt started. You had to I do start and when I start and I recognize who hurt me. Simple as pick up a pen and a paper, write the names and choose to forgive. Forgiveness is not for them, but for you. Yeah. And then I start to say, you know what? Accountability. Then after that, healing process. That don't come overnight. I had to be intentional. Yeah. I had to be and I had to make a choice and say, no, no, no. I wouldn't talk to people who are gonna keep me negative and keep me to be bitter. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm going to be with people like you'll be surprised when people come negatively come out of people's mouth that you do unconsciously when situation happen because that's sick in you, you um, react. So I start to separate myself from a lot of negativity and I start to keep a lot of my things private and did work on me secretly because it's not for people. Okay. I had to get to a place where I'm not living for people. That was the biggest thing. Tell me, I had to say to myself, in this world perfect the art of life nobody conquered but jesus christ so i had to say okay everybody my story my lane my script so i say okay learnies i'm at the age of 34 this is a new beginning how am i gonna win this get this how am i gonna start this so i got to the place where i start to take accountability work on me everything i work on me wardrobe do stuff take me time Simple as half an hour on my break, I find a me spot. Sometimes I cried. I get over it. I, 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 I say, I can't stay here crying, sober and pity party won't work. So I had to build myself and within the year, I saw a difference and I started to get that inner peace and naturally I smile. So my choices was different. So when I started to date guys, at one point, my friend, to the right, I used to call her and talk to her. And I say, oh, you remind me of that. And he remind me of that and she said, Stop that right there. So you need friends who are accountable too, could tell yeah. you about your accountability. Yeah. So I needed that where I was so conscious. And when I started to sit, I say, no, 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 no. You got to take ownership. So, and that's the type of person I am. I'm a person where I, I want you to hit me where it is so I can change. Yeah. God said he come to give you life and give you life more abundantly. Right. I asked God in 2018, if you give people abundant life, why I live an abundant life? And he said, did you ask me for that? Did you ask me how? And the first thing I had to do was humility. I had to humble myself. And then I had to take accountability and work on myself. So I would say to you, work on you. And when you start to love you, you can love others, yeah. even in spite of what their situation. Then another step, how I trust them. I love them with Christ, but I cannot fix them. My God, yes. I cannot fix a person. A person have to want to fix themselves. Mm -hmm. So that means they have to go in self-recognition, self evaluation in order to move and that's when unequally yoke comes in that's why people goes into that second marriage of divorce and um, um, marriage and then divorce again My God. you understand me so 
you now, you know what it is, you're talking to a woman who can sit down and talk to her ex and counsel him and love him and his wife and want them to win it. Wow. It didn't come here overnight. It was decision. <laughs> it was a choice. Oh, child. So I, it, what the choice you choose today? Because bitterness and unforgiveness is a weight. I never conceived and had a child yet by choice. So I don't know how to carry a load. It didn't feel good. Let me ask CG. CG, do you happen to, are you able to answer the question that the caller uh, placed just now? The, prop, the question that she wanted to know was, you know, how do you trust again after being, you know, saying that the Lord has blessed you with someone or in a relationship? Well, the, for me, I can only go by on my experience in this instance, as everyone's situation is very different. But for me, for me to trust again, everything is literally based on choice. Just like what Lurney said, it's really based on choice because I can choose to live as well as I can choose to die, not necessarily physically, but, you know, just, you know, linger in a gloom and doom. Okay, and with trusting, I had to then, much like she said, I had to go through my process or for the women out there who are going through or would have come out of, you know, I, I jokingly say that love ain't do me nothing. And, and in this regard, trust ain't do me nothing. And so just like how the word of God says, work out your own salvation. You also have to work it. My favorite saying, you got he, you got he work it out in you. Yes. <laughs> you have to make the right decisions to reflect involvement moving forward, even though it hurts. Even though you may you may not feel like you can trust and live again, you can. Yes. And you yes. will. Yes. That's that's just a feeling. And a lot of times we don't realize that when we're going through something extremely intense, that's a lot of pressure. And so that's also a lot of pressure to have to filter out in our mindsets for us to come to a place to say, oh my gosh, what am I gonna do? But when it comes to trust, you have no other choice but to trust your way forward. You know, even if it, in any instance with anybody, you have to make that decision and not to then be fearful to trust again, because it makes no sense. It is not productive to you. And it's, it's going to impact those around you. And the last thing you need is to be someone or any of us is to be someone because we lack trust or we're afraid to trust. Then we now become, all, in a sense, delusional, living in our own world, in our own bubble, because we're afraid to live and breathe. It's so destructive. It's very destructive. But this topic is such a wonderful topic, and it's so yes. much to say. Yeah. But, you know... The, like I said, even if you don't feel like you can trust again, choose to trust again. Mm -hmm. And like Lurnie said, it's all about that healing. You know, it's all about having the right people around you to encourage the fact that you can trust again. You can live again. You can be because it is in Christ. It's in God that we live, we move, we have our being. Yeah. And so if you don't live and for you through, okay, in this instance, trust, then what are you going to do? So you have to choose, you have to just twice your way through. Amen. Mm, that yeah. is powerful. Well, I can tell you, I literally walked through this. And so listen, the mind battles mm -hmm. almost killed me. Mm -hmm. I, the depression, the back and forth in my mind, God, did I really hear you? God, did I get this thing right? God, did I rush? God, was it? the right timing that almost kills me i was out of place in my mind like i was so embarrassed you know all the people talking you know the things that were being said because a lot of people said oh it wasn't gonna work anyway uh i went into mm. it with a lot of word curses uh being spoken um and so for me it was i almost fret myself to death depression almost consumed my mind um but the Lord had to settle me. And one of the things I had to remember is the promise still stands. Whatever God spoke over my life concerning my personal life, it still stands. One of the things that settled my spirit was when God said, you cannot force a person. You cannot force a person. Yeah. So it takes two in a marriage. Yeah. And so God could give you all the prophecy and the confirmation and all of that but you have to work the prophecy. You have to work the word. Mm -hmm. And so you can get 
prophecy tell tomorrow come but prophecy is a twofold thing you could get a word but you have to work on the word mm -hmm. and so i had to get to a place where i said okay i got i, I after all the hurt and the pain because it was painful because i like the topic says how did i get here like god mm -hmm. the very thing i did not expect how did i get here mm -hmm. so walking the road of shame the embarrassment um all of the things that you know that's because there's let me tell you something there is no perfect marriage no. No. there is no perfect wife there is no perfect husband mm -hmm. but you have to put in the work mm -hmm. marriage is work and one of the things where i realize is when we are in relationships when we're in a dating phase ask the questions when we are in the dating phase everything is so peach and cre peaches and cream and rosy but we don't get to see the individual when they're mad mm -hmm. we don't get to see how they act when there's a financial problem mm -hmm. we don't get to see certain things so when you get married and they begin to uh, a situation or a trial come up and you see them you'll be like wow because for me i realized that my ex-husband did not like confrontation and I was like, okay, so how are we going to talk? Mm -hmm. We have sometimes confrontation is necessary, mm -hmm. very much necessary. Mm -hmm. So if we have a problem and I'm bringing it to you and every time I bring it to you, shut down, which I know men do, mm -hmm. but there's a better way because like, like Lurnie said, I think he brought hurt into the marriage because he was married before. So it was like, you already come into the marriage at a disadvantage per se. Mm -hmm. So you just have to work it. Mm -hmm. But I feel I wasn't or we wasn't given that opportunity because it was just so many voices, so many people's opinions. Um, you know, one of my what I would say is my biggest mistake is being vulnerable and pain and all of that, confiding in people who I thought I could trust. Mm. And when they went back to him, they told him what I said, but didn't say what mm. they said. Ah. So it was a lot of confusion. It was a lot of uh, back and forth. I'm talking about people I try talking about leaders. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Friends who said that they would be there for us said things to me. And I didn't go to them to, to expose them because I would never want to expose my husband because we won. Yeah. If I expose him, I'm exposing myself. Yeah. I went for help because at that point, uh, okay, I'm dealing with this person who I'm, I'm still barely just getting to know. I'm dealing with a person who and shut the who shut all the way down on me. I'm in the Bahamas and you're in Florida. We already at a disadvantage because we can't hardly see each other. And so when all the confusion and all of that uh, uh, came in, I was like, God, like, so God, after all the healing process, God put me at peace to know, guess what? I, I said it. And even if God allowed it, because guess what? I had to go through the pain. I had to go through the process. I had to go through the purging because guess what? Where God wanted to take me or is taking me, especially dealing with women, I got to have something to say. Yes. I got to be relevant. What right. you been through, sis? You got to speak to me if you ain't been through nothing. So I can speak on being a single mother. I can speak on being a married woman. I can speak on being a divorcee. God upgraded my resume. Exactly. Okay. I had to go through it because... When I went into the marriage, when I went into the marriage, wit could not carry me for the next assignment mm -hmm. because I needed to be crushed. I needed to listen. I never prayed so much in all my entire life because when I was going through, I ran to the floor, to my knees because it was, listen to me, I had to pray and pray and worship and praise my way through. And so I trust God. I take God at his word to live again, to breathe again, to love again. And I want to tell someone today, divorce is not the end. No, It is not the end. You will live again. You will breathe again. You will, listen, it is not the end. It is just the beginning. It's a bump in the road. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I didn't have a choice. I don't know if the, if, if, if the ladies here divorced their husband, but my husband divorced me. Okay? And the old people say, don't let nobody tell you more than once they don't want you. Okay. No matter how much I fasted, no matter how much I prayed, no matter how much I cried, no matter it was still not enough. No matter how much love letters I wrote, no matter how many times I, 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 I went to him and said, guess what? I want my marriage. I want my marriage. I want, but it takes two to fight. If you are the only one in your relationship fighting, you're fighting 
to, to, to no avail. Yeah. And so it takes two to fight. And so you have to know and to leave it alone. I said, Sadie, okay, how could you be a person that, are, that is encouraging other women? Because I began to lose myself. I began to, yes, I want the marriage. I want the marriage work because come on, I did not see this happening. But what could you do if someone already closed their self in, if someone does not want to work it out, if somebody uh, 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 does not want to uh, have the hard conversations, what could you do? So I felt like I was fighting a losing battle. And so even though in my emotions, I said, listen, brother man, I already home, it's cheaper you give me the divorce. Yes, I said that. But I think when I said that, that caused him to shut way down because I think the first marriage, the person said the same thing. So wow. it was like he was reliving this thing again. Okay, I end this again. So at the end of the day, I said, listen, I want my marriage. I'm like Lernice. If I did something wrong, I'm accountable. I would say, listen, I did this wrong. I said this wrong. I made my mistakes. I apologize for whatever it is. That's just me. But it has to take the other person to see where they were wrong as well. Because mm -hmm. it cannot just be you. That's right. You ain't, you speak, you ain't speaking half truth. You're speaking the, the whole, whole truth. truth. All right. You're speaking the whole truth. And there's so many different nuggets that you said in there. Oh, Lord, it's just so much. But I want to get CG in. I want to get CG in. Okay. Um, CG, let's hear from you. What do you have to say in all of this? Yes, it's, <laughs> I'm just loving this moment of sharing. I really am. And I'm so thankful for Sean. Thank you for having me a part of this. And thank you, ladies. And I appreciate you all as well. You know, my story is very unique, much like you all are with your stories. And going back to the lady's question, the caller's question about trust. My trust was tested in every fiber of its being that here it is, um, a young lady, when I got married, my first marriage was when I was in my early 20s. And, you know, the marriage, when it came to its, its, its uh, threshold, I guess, because of whatever circumstances that we were experiencing, we both understood and accepted the fact that, okay, that's enough. We cannot go any further. And to this day, you know, we've made peace and we have an excellent uh, co-parenting situation with uh, our system, with, with um, our family unit, okay? But in terms of this marriage that I am now coming out of, like I said before, it was a lot of red flags on a consistent thing that I saw and I continue to question it. And even though those questions was always a shift or some type of situation happened where it, you know, the way that his wording was, it always reflected that, okay, this, you know, is just the enemy. It's just the devil, right? And so I can say that the manifestation of that particular thing that I saw as a red flag happened, whereas my very own family member, and my son to be ex-husband had an affair and they're still together to this day. And this is my first generation cousin. Jesus. And so with that being said, my trust was tested on both sides where the sword was in the front, the side, the back, the top, the bottom, because this particular family member and I have never had a discord one day of my life. Not one day. But I had to make a choice. So that's why I keep saying my choices. I could not rely on my feelings. I had to rely on my choices. I had to either choose the pain of lingering and the loss, or I could choose the pain of, you know, deprogramming, restructuring, and just moving forward in my life for whatever God has in store regarding my goals and his vision and all of that good stuff, right? But it was a very difficult process. And to this day, I've not had a single word with my cousin. And even when, in terms of after I found out the truth about the two of them, and even before, when I saw the red flags, even with her and I addressed her with it, you know, she said to me, I don't ever have to worry about that. She don't ever want to sleep with my husband, quote unquote, but then, you know, they are together to this day. Wow. So, the life that I had, I had an actual ministry with my son to be ex-husband. We had an actual life together that 
everything appeared to be flourishing on the outside, but it was absolutely crumbling behind the scenes. And it was a lot of red flags, like I said. And for me to unpack and label those red flags would be here tonight till tomorrow. And that's what I said, you know, it's just a lot. It's honestly, it's just a lot. And so I just want to respect the time of the flow. But, you know, me sitting here and just listening to everyone's stories and also, you know, knowing that I have a story to contribute, you know, I refuse to let trust and love in my life be tainted. And I refuse to beat anyone else with that experience because yes. that was my experience for what was for what it was relevant for back then, you know? And so there was a season and a very short one where I wanted to still make the marriage work, but then I had to question myself and I had to really say to myself, okay, is this pride for me wanting this marriage to work still? Or is this truly me wanting to, it to work for myself? And I realized that, you know what, CG, if you want to hold on to this marriage, maybe it's for pride and for embarrassment and all of that. All of those emotions came through my, my mind. I experienced all of those, but I refuse. I refuse to live there. I have two children. I have two sons who look up to me. You know, I have to be healthy and in a mental capacity to function for my kids. And so I had to really make some heavy decisions. It didn't mean that I did not feel the pressure of everything crushing me to the point where I literally thought I was going to die because I could not bear the weight of the grief that I bore. But I had to work and choice my way through it. And in that, you know, there were persons who God had to come across my path who were very significant who was a listening air to so whatever time, sometimes I would just talk my heart and my spirit, you know, in terms of my heart, in terms of everything that I was experiencing up until nine o'clock in the morning where I saw the sun rise because I was still heavy and I was still weighted. But for me, you know, I had to do things that worked for me. And that was to talk my way through it, through my community of persons who I trusted. And I trusted them because they showed themselves to be trusted. And it was a very small group of persons, mm -hmm. but not the last thing for my people. That was my village. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so I can I can confidently and soundly sit here in this session, hoping that my story impacts that one person to know that no, I don't, I'm not, there's no bitterness, there's no no guile. You know, I've forgiven my cousin, though we've never had a conversation. I've forgiven wow. my son, the ex-husband. We've actually had a conversation where I became accountable to him. And I said, you know what? I do apologize for X, Y, and Z that I've experienced or that I've done to you. You know, so, you know, once again, it's, it's a lot to say. But yeah. wow. I just chose not to allow those things to weigh me down and to and to take away my my virtue as a as a young woman and to make me into a bitter person and to rob the life from me and you know the bible says if the unbelieving spouse wants to leave you let them leave and so that's what i had to do i had to choose to let go because what was it going to profit me for me to have gray hair before time and, <laughs> and be utterly stressed out over over who when he was not adding value to my life anymore, I refuse to do that. I will not do that. You, like, you ladies are so strong. You are so strong. CG, thank you so much. Thank you for sharing. Uh, yeah. One of the questions I wanted to ask, guess what? There are some questions here in this post. And if John Lee would, um, Wally would allow me, um, please, I know that you're strict because you come from Guardian Radio. I know y'all is going, y'all is cut off, right? 6.59 and a half if the show start uh, and at seven o'clock, John Lee, I can need it. If I got to pay you extra, let me pay you extra because I just need at least five or 10 more minutes with them before we have the other guests come in. And I appreciate you saying yes. Thank you for that. Um, but I want to read something that was uh, posted here. It says, I don't understand if they heard from God and got confirmation to get married. Did they hear from God to get divorced? I'm confused. Was it really God they heard from? Don't get me wrong. I am only trying to understand. My husband said he got confirmation from God concerning me too. Should I be on edge? I'm going to give you all a chance to talk. I'm going to have my moment anyway. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to wait. I'm going to get your I'll get everything. Yeah. And then we go from there. Jamie, I will. Thank you again. 
I'll answer that person's question. Yeah, you have from God, but you're still human. Lack of wisdom is a, is a serious thing, wisdom. So you hear from God, yes. Doesn't mean your marriage is not going to be tested. Now, you keep hearing us say, but red flags. This is something I will say to somebody who are about to be married. Could you handle those red flags? Could those red flags multiply in the marriage magnify by 10 times? Could you handle that? Could you live with these red flags? See, that's the situation there. You might be, a woman might be say, okay, they're red flags. I could believe God, I could pray, and this person will change. Sometimes the change have to be you. Sometimes some women choose to close their eyes to that scheming husband. Some women say, I'm more valuable than that. I'm good enough. Why should I stay with that scheming husband? <laughs> so, yes, but that man, yeah, did hear from God. He hear from it, but he need to be delivered. Mm -hmm. Just how you have to be delivered. That's the key. See, just how you made up your mind and level of maturity to say, I want to be married. I let those things go of worldly and single life to be a mature person, to be married. See, when we go to the altar, it's good eating the cake and dancing and partying, but yeah. reality hits in. When financial situation comes in, is your husband financial? Is he a gambler? See, you have to position yourself to know that if your husband is a gambler, you have to be the one who financially secured and be able to put the put the bills down. So you have to now, because I know now, I can say this. Yes, I was a coward. I break down and I run <laughs> because I felt overwhelmed. I didn't know how. I didn't get the right counsel. Doesn't mean that I, I didn't hear from God. Yes, I hear from God, but lack of wisdom. God blesses, but the enemy comes to tempt. Yes. But what do you want is wisdom the bible say wisdom is the principal, principal thing, thing. Okay. okay so that's my little nugget to you okay i, I love it i'm gonna give you um when it's like a chance to share i'm gonna give cg a chance to share well i basically answered that uh when i was sharing earlier like i said listen it takes it takes two um you could get the confirmation you could get the prophecy all of that but you have to work the word you have to work the marriage you have to put in the work when things began to get so bad me being the the person that i am of course if i'm looking to my husband as the leader i go to him i say okay one of the things i asked him i said what is god saying because you prophesied some stuff over my life you prophesied some stuff over our marriage so what is god saying now i i never got the answer i'm still not I'm, i still never received the answer so i was like god are you bipolar because you don't just say something and then you take back. You don't say something and then have us confused because confusion is not of God. Yeah, right. And so me being the wife, I'm, I said, okay, I'm going to go to him and ask him, what is God saying now? Mm -hmm. I never got an answer. So which made me to believe that you were moving out of your flesh. That's how I felt. And he's a minister. He's a pastor. He's yeah. a pastor. Okay. All right. You know, yeah. um, CG. Yes. Um, regarding anything that, you know, God would show you, or uh, in my instance, you know, I never said in my testimony that God showed me anything. I never knew that he would have been someone that I would have married. It was him who told me that this was what the Lord said. And because I had already seen him on the platform that he ministered and, you know, prophesied to the death that he did and was so accurate and all of that, you know, it was a new and learning experience for me. And so in that regard, yes, we went to others in terms of spiritual leadership who, you know, were able to, you know, minister to us there on too that, okay, yes, this is the case or that isn't the case. But at the end of the day, the relationship still has to be vetted. It has to be much fitting where you got he do your homework. <laughs> <laughs> you have to do your homework. You have to have much discussions, much discussions, because you have to also now, if this is what God is saying, and if you accept it, that that's what this person is saying, because even in a different instance, it can be a case where a man just chooses to say, okay, this particular lady is someone who I want to marry. And it, it is without any spiritual utterance. The foundation is still the same. Mm -hmm. The groundwork still has to happen. The work still has to be done, much like the um, Minister Cedric said. 
the relationship has to be vetted, much discussions, much questioning, you know, therapy, ensuring that you have done the work, for example, for myself, you know, I've done the work and I'm still doing the work. And I guess that's why I'm so light and airy because, you know, the, the worst has passed. This is a new day, you know, God is good and life is very good and very beautiful at this point, you know, but of course that's my past. Mm -hmm. And even though I've strayed from the question, <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> but the fact remains life is what you literally make it by your decisions because yeah. everything can be perfect. But if you are not in the same mindset with this individual, and if you are not evolving together, it's still going to come to naught somewhere along the way. Yes. And so you cannot rely that on just the prophecy or whatever the unction is or whatever the confirmation is, because that's our individual situations. Yours is different. And for her, she will have to work that out and ensure that she dots all of her eyes and crosses her teeth because, and accept whatever red flag she sees and whatever she's told that that is gold and just move forward. And so I wasn't sure if she's married or not now, but you know, just have to do your homework and work it out. Um, that's that's great advice, ladies. That's great advice. Let me ask you a question, all of you, and just just let me know, yes or no. Have you healed? Yes. Are you healed? Yes. 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 Cg, mm -hmm. are you healed? I do believe so. I do believe so because I'm putting the. Sorry, we're not laughing. We're laughing at you, at Wally. Wally. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay, you know, I put in the work, you know, it's, it's, you know, don't get me wrong, you know, it's, it's definitely been a journey. And yeah. I don't look it and I don't feel the weight of it because the weight is gone. You know, and I've, I've done the counseling for which I'm still doing my therapy sessions, I still have my community with me, you know, and so I, I do believe that I'm checking off all of the things that I need to do to ensure that I am mentally sound. And I'm able to filter through things that may come across as overwhelming at any given point in time. You know, every one of us, we're human. And, you know, for all of us, our, our story is, you know, this is now our, 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 our past. How did we get here? Wow. Decisions. Wow. Wow. Decisions. It, it, it's all about decisions. decisions. I, I try and hold in because I can't, I don't, I, this is your time. When it's my time, <laughs> I'll talk. So here's my last question. Are you open to love again? Yes, I am. Okay. I repeat this. Divorce is not the end. I still young. I hit 40 yet. Of course. <laughs> most definitely. Hey. hey. <laughs> Are you open to love again? Okay. You're freezing on my end. Can you repeat that? Are you open to love again? Child love ain't doing me nothing wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you got to be open. <laughs> I am open to love again. Of course, of course. I'm open to love again. But honestly, when that time comes, I'm definitely not going to rush. Once I would have, yes. Because the funny thing is with both of us, this is both of our second marriage. And so we realize that it has not worked. And I've, you know, I accept that this is now part of my history. And so it's just a matter of me now just, you know, continuing to move forward in life and continuing to evolve and, and live. But, yeah, I'm open to love again. I love that. Now, my question, my final question to you, I want you to talk to uh, women right now who are listening, those who are single, wanting to be married, those who are in the process of maybe rocky, a rocky state right now, turbulence, as I've stated at the beginning of the show, those who are in the process of divorce, where you know, they're just waiting for the final paper or the signature or whatever have you. And then finally to those who have already divorced. Now, it don't have to be in this order, but I know whatever it is that you wanna say, gonna allow the Lord to speak through you. Um, and I want you to do it 10 minutes. I'm gonna give you two minutes each, um, just to minister to those who are listening at the moment. We're gonna start, for, start with Lernies, and we go to the minister, Cedric, then then we go to CG. Okay. First of all, I've been here all night, y'all been hearing, God said this, God said a prophecy. God give us wisdom and common sense. Mm -hmm. um, you know who you are. You know if you're single and you want to be married. You know, God present people to us. He don't choose that's your husband. He presents. And God present Adam, Eve, and Adam said he chose Eve. 
Okay, so that means if you're seeing red flags and you know you can't deal with it now, why get married? It's gonna let that person work on it, or if that person recognizes it, is that person aware and saying, you know, I want to work on this by themselves, not you. Sometimes they're unaware, but counseling is much needed. Um, that's something serious, and even when you're in a marriage. Seek counselors. We have professional, excellent professional counselors. People don't want to go to shrink, but they call they they fancy now. It's called life coach. So seek a life coach, and we are affordable, reasonable. They work with you if they have the passion, um, and work it out. You know, talk. Um, you know, love is patient. Love is kind. It's not puffed up. You know, that person means that they're not a horrible person. They might need deliverance. They don't even know what they're doing because some days it's been cultured, you know. So you could love, but I wouldn't say stay if the person's abusing you. If that person is verbally abusing you and do well, me, I choose to leave him because I start to get physical. I start to fight because I had anger issues. Wow. So it's a place where you have to protect you. And I allow, I put him out because I needed it before I go to jail or somebody <laughs> dead or he hit me, which he did or the fence reacting to hit and give me a blow a mom blow ain't nothing to play with <laughs> i get sense quick but i felt sorry because i provoked him to that you know so you there's a lot of things you need to sit down and give yourself a lot of questions give the mate that doesn't mean he's a bad person but you cannot change that person yep. but only the advice i'll give them and even before during and after seek a professional help find somebody come not I, I mean, I, yeah, real prefer help. real help. Who trained? Let me ask um, Mrs. Rodriguez a question. Uh, this is something that I noticed that, that Lernice has been doing throughout the show when she was acknowledging and, and, and owning up to her responsibility. Can I ask, is there anything that you are willing to share that you could own up to? Some of the things that you may have done wrong um, that you don't mind sharing. Hey, if I had done it differently, then this would not have happened. Definitely. So one of the things I said that I would never do again, of course, is definitely not involving anyone in my marriage. Right. That's that's that's, important. that's very important. Um, secondly, is even though sometimes we as women, we have valid points, our, our feelings are valid or should be valid. Mm -hmm. um, knowing when to say, mm -hmm. knowing how to say, mm -hmm. or knowing when not even to say at all. Mm -hmm. That was one of my things. Like I felt like when I saw a issue or not that it wasn't valid, that I had to address it right there. I had to, I had to address it. So it could almost come off like you nagging, mm -hmm. but it wasn't nagging. It's just that I have valid concerns and I don't know how to, I was never taught how to, okay, you have valid questions, but hey, right now, don't address this now. Wait till another time to address it or even how you address it or e even to just the sin. Sis, use the praying woman. Get on your knees and pray. Come on. All right. If there's an Come issue, on. if you feel as if, hey, brother man ain't getting it, pray. Because guess what? It is God that has the heart of a man in his hands and he turned it. Listen, I, I, I come on this prayer. So the priest. I got the wrong job. I'll take over the whole switchboard so we can be all night because we need to make sure these ladies are delivered and set free. Wally? Yeah, so. Give us some man. Get a pillow. So, right. you know, God changes the heart of a man. And so I've learned to listen. Sister girl, next time, if you feel as if he is not getting it or he's not understanding your feelings, pray about it. Mm -hmm. Or don't talk about it when you're already heated. Cause ain't nobody listening to one another. Mm -hmm. Everybody feel as if their feelings valid and no one, so you're back and forth and you ain't getting nothing accomplished. Cause why? You're just running on, running on and running on. And then you're leaving situations unresolved. Sorry. <laughs> What's up, I'm laughing at Christoph. He's like, beautiful. <laughs> That's strength. Bishop. Put me in strings, please. Let's go. We ready. <laughs> yeah. So that would be definitely my takeaway. Um, that would be my takeaway. <laughs> So they're my two takeaways. Definitely. All right. So to to you know, women who are single, I would definitely say you know enjoy your time of by taking advantage of the fact that you have time to prepare. If marriage is your your goal, use your time wisely. Even though your time is you know to have you know your fun and live your best life, you know also start to do your preparations. 
and to make certain that your temple, your mind, your spirit, your soul, everything is, is well prepared to take on a relationship, a partnership with someone else, and also to learn conflict resolution. Okay, to those who may be going through, I would say, you know, just continue to remain prayerful, continue to seek counsel, and, you know, really look yourself in the mirror and really think hard about the decisions that need to be made moving forward. Because if you're in something that is very catastrophic, is it a product of the fruits? Is these, are these fruits the product of seed sown, which were not good seed or in good soil? Because maybe, <clears throat> excuse me, the chaos is taking place because, you know, the foundation was never laid properly. <clears throat> and so with that being said, if, if the house is now sinking or being destroyed, then probably it's just best to, you know, cut your losses and move forward. And to those, or if you, you only, you can determine and through spiritual advisement, if your relationship is worth saving. In some instances, it's just best to walk away. But of course that is based on what are the implications. If it is something that is, of course, on the lines of abuse, then definitely, you know, seek counsel and much wisdom with that. But though, to those who are going through a divorce, just know that you're not a failure. Mm -hmm. yeah. And think of it like this. When you think of Albert Einstein, you know, he failed many times. When you think of Michael Jordan, when you think of the great legends of this day and of, of days of old, they all fail their way to success. And so just because you are experiencing now having to walk away from something, it does not mean that you've lost. Sometimes, like the song by Fantasia says, sometimes you have to lose to win. Yes. Okay. okay? And so in that regard, you, you know, okay. Yeah. That, sorry. I want to let you say that last <laughs> point because Wally gave me five minutes extra. So go ahead, babe. I, I don't want to cut you off. Yeah. 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 So in that regard, you know, just know that, you know, just understand that this is only a season and not a season that you're living in. It's just temporary. And so understand that the weight of whatever you're experiencing, it's not there to stay. You shall overcome, but just make sure do your work, do the work on yourself. Do the work on yourself. Amen. Yes. Amen, yes. CG. We have a caller. Uh, caller, welcome to your lane talk show. Good evening. If you'd like to make a call. CG, you run the people, man. You're talking too much to let the people go on. <laughs> um, okay, so, so I'm going to take a minute. Uh, this is my talk to the audience moment. Like I was trying to like cringe not to say anything because you, you ladies are so filled with wisdom. You Everything that I really wanted to say, you've already said. So I'm trying to see if I could just compact it as much as possible. And the first thing I want to say is to forgive yep. for those who have been in the process of divorce already forgiving forgiveness is so important yep. it's so vital and as learning alluded you're not just forgiving for him you're forgiving for yourself okay and and in the process of forgiveness this is how i've learned to forgive people i pray for them mm -hmm. it's very hard to hate someone who you're praying for you have to when you when you're in the process of your hurt of hurt you're in the process of a, a broken heart you understand that when you pray for that individual, it, God somehow has a way of just transforming your spirit, transforming your heart so that you're able to, to forgive them. And, and I want you to know that it's important that you forgive because the Bible says that if you regard iniquity in your heart, God will not hear you. So here it is that you still harboring unforgiveness and you still har harboring um, resentment towards that person or your ex. And then you come in before God requesting things and asking for blessings and all these different things. And he's not a man that he should lie. So he's not going to give you something and his hands are held behind his back because you're still harboring unforgiveness. All right. Um, I was able to speak with someone who, who got a divorce years ago. I mean, like 10 plus years ago. And I asked if it's okay for them to share their story with me. And would you believe that in the midst of them sharing their story that I could hear and discern that hurt was still there, resentment was still there. And according to her, she said, um, 
Well, I call him and I tell him I forgive him for anything or whatever it is that he said. So I said, I, it's okay to tell him that. But are you, how are you feeling in all of this? Mm -hmm. You know, and she, you know, like when people say, well, I, I, I forgive him. No, mm -hmm. no, 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 uh, no, no. Um, listen, for those who are mm -hmm. still harboring that, I just want to take a moment. This, this is a moment for you. This is your moment. You're still yeah. harboring, you're hurting. Someone out there right now who's listening, oh Lord, I wear the wrong lashes because I'm about to start crying and y'all know what oh, I use. Lord. This the lashes where when you cry, <laughs> the lashes end up on, your, on the chin. Um, but there's someone who's crying right now because they're hurt. My God. They're hurt, they're in pain, they, their heart is broken, they're confused. And similar to you ladies, they may have heard God said, this is your husband, but you're confused. Oh, you I'm may have heard, you know, God said that this is the ministry that you're supposed to be in, but you don't know what's going on. You you don't know. You question in God. You may have been like Minister Cedrico, where you've been fasting so long and you're trying to figure out what's going on. I don't get it. All right. I, I and and it's and it's hurting you, and you and 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 the, the resentment is still there. The confusion is still there. I, I definitely would advise you, in faith, to take just take a deep breath for me. Take a deep breath in, and when you exhale. I want you to exhale in faith now. You're releasing your hurt. You're releasing your pain. You're releasing resentment. You're releasing the embarrassment. You're releasing the abuse, the jealousy. Oh you're releasing whatever emotions that may have wrapped up or been hidden inside of you. Mm -hmm. You're releasing all those things. And then most importantly, you're going before God tonight, this very moment, right after the show. Oh if, even if you can't even listen to the rest of the show, that's fine. Good always listen to it. Mm -hmm. And I want you to confess everything exactly how you feel to the father let him know how you feel in this very moment he's okay that's what listen he said that he's near to the brokenhearted it's us who he wants you know for us we when when we talk about confiding and don't know who to confide to or with you have the person right there he's with you every step of the way you could confide in him you could tell him even though yes he knows all but it's something there's nothing like when you actually bringing out your hurt, your pain, your your confusion to him and allow him to heal you. Allow God to heal you. Don't give the enemy access to your emotions. Mm -hmm. Release it. And then when you do that, forgive yourself. Because most of us, sometimes we in the state, as women, we, we blame ourselves for doing things. Sometimes it's be the men, you know, but be so much caught up in and um, our emotions that we just saying it's me. I, I did this. Mm -hmm. You have to forgive yourself as well. Mm -hmm. Yes, you made mistakes. It's okay. We make mistakes. We're human. We'll always make mistakes. All right. The person's made mistakes before you. Persons will make mistakes after you. But the point is you forgive yourself. Yes. All right. That is important. Give yourself time to heal before you start saying that you want to go back into another relationship. Mm -hmm. I've seen many relationships, countless relationships who've been, you know, you could have been using that time to to to, to uh, minister to other people or do something with your your purpose mm -hmm. while you're healing. Yes. yes, to be doing something. That person who you brought in, who you mm -hmm. um, caused to love you, could have been working on themselves. But because you haven't healed, mm -hmm. you caused in the relationship. Would you say God say mm -hmm. to mess up and look bad? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. yes. You have to heal first. Yes, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you have to. Do, and how do you know it? You know it when. You things don't trigger you mm, as easily that, as they should. Wow, oh. that's it. That's it. That's it right there. That's it. Mm -hmm. All right. And for those who have healed, wow. don't be afraid to love again. Yes. Love is out there for you. Yes. Love is for everyone. Love is for everyone. You go outside, you find love. You find love in, in animals. Yes. You know what I mean? You know yes. what I mean? I, Glory. Whew, there's so much. Um, and for those who are married. Watch the words you say every time. And I, I'm guilty of this, and I haven't done it in a while, but I'm guilty of this <laughs> in the, part, the beginning of my relationship. Any little thing, I can divorce you. <laughs> I, you ain't ready for no marriage. <laughs> and it's me. Y'all yeah. know my mouth sassy. Yeah. Okay, it was me. It was me claiming things. And, and you know what stopped me? This was like about six years ago. Um, I met a lady, and she said to me, she said, you know, I used to say the same thing. I said, what's going on in marriage? Oh, we divorced. She your words it. are life, honey. Wow. Your words can either wow. bring you to your desires, your dreams and goals, or your words can guide you to your worst nightmare. Wow. Watch what you say. Your words are important. When you have an argument, 
do not use the D word. Like my husband, like he didn't even say that word. I don't use the D word. Yeah. And my final point is to watch who you are talking to yep. and who you're getting advice from mm -hmm. because single bitter friends can't help you. Okay? Exactly. They will tell you, let's go get dressed up, let's go to the club, let's go drink. Or they will even look at Johnny. <laughs> or they will even advise you to say, man, you might as well go cheat on him because he cheated on you first to go cheat on him. That's okay. Mm -hmm. That way you'll do to for that. No. Because if you claim to be a, 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 a woman of God, you know, for men who are listening, a man of God, then you want to seek counsel from him or you want to ask him, God, give me wisdom to know who should I go to to share my information so that they can wise. Because not through of, of, of wise, wise counsel, God wants us to be in the midst of wise counsel. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. So, um, for those, lastly, the, I have to say this too, because there is someone I know who's also holding on to God's promises. God told them, even though that there was a divorce, that God told them that, hey, I'm going to bring you back together again. There may be some wow. who are in a situation wow. who have yes. already signed the paper. Because I know of a few who have already signed the paper and gone their separate way. And then two seconds later, they're back together again. That's it may right. be a year. It may be two years. But you say you heard God and he confirmed with you and to you that y'all are going to do ministry together. Or y'all going to be back together. Stand true on his word. You understand? And yes, it does take two. But allow God to minister to him. Allow God to teach him. Because in that process of separation, God is working on him mm -hmm. and God is working on you. Um, remember now, and someone said this, this is so important. We as wise women, we're supposed to build our homes. Yes. It is a foolish woman yes, that tears it down, tears it down mm -hmm. with her hands. Yes. Yes. Be oh, careful, mm -hmm. little mouth, what, what you, you say. say. Mm -hmm. Okay, be careful, little hands. What you what touch, you what you put your hands into. All right. Mm -hmm. Um, and lack of premarital education is also a contributing factor of divorce, as mm -hmm. we've already stated as well. We've mm -hmm. we've known that some people come in with high expectations and ignorant of their spouse's thoughts and views and their spirituality. Mm -hmm. They're ignorant of how they how to resolve conflicts. They don't know about how to communicate, mm -hmm. as 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 Minister Cedric has stated. Um, they don't know how to deal with in laws. They have issues with that. Okay, mm -hmm. they don't know how to deal with the finances. They don't know. They don't have social skills. All right. So for those who may be in um, thinking about getting married or need marriage coaching. <laughs> hey, <laughs> <laughs> my name is Coach Trish Hanna. I'm the coach of Your Lane Life Coaching. And if you want to, you could take a look at my website, www.yourlanelifecoaching.com. You can sign up for a free consultation. I am willing to give you a free consultation. All right. And not just me, because there are so many other my colleagues out there who are doing a phenomenal job with premarital counseling, um, with coaching, premarital and marriage coaching, life coaching. Um, so go onto the website www.yourlanelifecoaching.com if you would like to um, access any information pertaining to what I do and how I can help. All right. Um, next, we're going to have, can we take a break in a second? We're going to have Minister Leonardo and Delores Allen. They're here now in the studio, been patiently waiting to help those yes, who may be going waiting. through in their marriage or those who simply want to enhance their fun and intimacy um, at their Hold It Together marriage retreat event. But before we go on our break, let me just thank these wonderful, strong, excellent, resilient <laughs> ladies, all right, who had, who could have been doing something else on their Saturday, but they came here to share their story, <laughs> that came here to 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 on their sunday on their sunday what did i say saturday saturday thank you <laughs> on their sunday evening in the rain to be here with you to speak to you um and to share their story and i want to thank my facebook audience also who were tuning in and were encouraging because i'm unable to read all of the the um all of the 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 the, the inputs but i'll try to as much as i can on our next break uh, but thank you, ladies, thank you. so much. You're thank welcome. you so much, thank CG. You so much. You're strong. You are resilient. And the fact that the, what I love about all of this is y'all are ready to love again. Yes. All right. When that time comes. <laughs> oh, goodness. Sorry, send your invitation. Okay. All right. All right. In fact, let me be. Let me mm -hmm. be among, of course, you are of other um, ministers, but let me help you too with your yes. coaching. Mm -hmm. All of you with that, with the pre marriage That's important. Yes, it is. Great. I <laughs> All right. That. So thank you so much, ladies. Thank you so much. And guess we're going to have a part two. I, I, I feel a part two. In yeah. the spirit. 
I have to because there's more yeah, that people need much. to know. Mm -hmm. Not only are we trying to um, help those who have already been divorced, we're trying to help those who to, to not divorce, yes. who are yes. already in the marriage. Yes. We're trying to keep it yes. together. Yes. We, we want to let them know, hey, this is what I did wrong. You don't have to do that same right. thing. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be abusive. Don't yes. be abusive to your yes. husband. You don't have to keep on saying, I get a boss you, I get a boss you. <laughs> like how I was like, with my sticking out. <laughs> all right? You could heal first before getting involved into the, in a yes. marriage. All right? Most There's definitely. a lot of things that need to be done prior to saying, I do. Yes. So God bless you. Any bless parting you. words? Anyone? Two seconds. Two seconds. Just be encouraged. Be encouraged. Don't lose yourself, ladies. For God's sake, yourself. don't lose yourself. CG. And forgive yourself for any any reason. You're not totally at fault. Love yourself. Move on. Blessings. Blessings. Let's take a break. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Come to Abia. Take a picture. To my Facebook audience, can you bear with me? We're going to have Minister Leonardo and Deloris Allen on. I just want to take a picture with these ladies before they leave. Um, Wally, come help me with that, please. I wish I was there. <laughs> Let's get this beautiful couple in. Yes, please. Yes, they can still see you from that camera. <laughs> That's all right. You, you good. I'm going to make sure she Hello. How much seconds we have? Come on, we got to take a real quick picture. John, we can take a quick picture. Three, two, one. Yeah. It is so close. I can tell you this so close. Nice. <laughs> no. You want it? Good job. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm gonna send these to y'all. Okay. Thank you. Blessings, drive safely. Hello and welcome, 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 Mr. and Mrs. Allen. How much more seconds do you have? Come in. Where you want them to sit? Right here? Right here, please. Are you experiencing pelvic pain or urinating a lot? Do you think you have a good night. Good night. It's so nice to meet you. Valerie, it's so nice to meet you. It's so beautiful. All right, let's go. Urinary incontinence, overactive bladder, and high prostate hyperplasia. That's fine. Call 702 Now y'all need to get together. Now we're going to go talking. But I know you're going to Welcome back. I could not end the show without having these two beautiful, this beautiful couple here with us as they talk to us about what they're doing this weekend. Um, we have with us Minister Leonardo and Delores Allen, his beautiful, beautiful wife. For those who watched the show, there was a few weeks ago called um, Teach Me How Teach to Love Him. Love we had Minister Leonardo on the show. And so I'm finally seeing the face behind the Facebook um, uh, inputs 
where she was like, that's my husband. <laughs> yeah, child. What is she type in, type in, type in. Guess what? I love it. And I love it. I love the support. I love, um, because I, I follow both of you. So I love the, the interaction that you have. So you're not just telling people about what you're doing. You're displaying it. I love that about you. So tell us what's happening this weekend. Well, next weekend, the 25th. Oh, it's and, next weekend. Yes, next okay. weekend, the 25th and the 26th. That's the Friday and Saturday. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to have our first marriage retreat. That's all together, marriage for a marriage retreat. And that's going to be at Super Club Breezes. Mm -hmm. Super Club. Super Club Breezes. And we're mm -hmm. going, we're looking for a, a fantastic time. Um, this ministry actually was birthed out of our pain struggle. Um, this is my second marriage. Mm -hmm. So coming into my second marriage, I was eagerly looking at the fact that this will work. Mm -hmm. um, going off of the your previous guests, listen, I sat out there and I was like, oh my God, these women are so strong and courageous. But you have to put in the work, like we said. I thought marriage was just once I got married and I said I do was, you know, it's just gonna be a fairy tale. Yeah. No, it's not. No. You have to put in the work. And the, um through our struggles, um, this ministry was birthed. Hold it together. Yeah. Okay. You have to hold it together. Okay. You have to fight. Another thing that was mentioned is um being ignorant of the fact what you have to do in order to hold your marriage together. Um, knowing um having the wisdom and seeking proper premarital counseling yes. so important. Yes. But we're looking to have a very inspiring, encouraging time on next weekend where we're, we're inviting couples to come and listen, we're gonna have a retreat, mm. a serious marriage retreat. So tell us, um, okay, so it's gonna be a breezes. What is the cost? How, how what, what does the ticket cost and how can we obtain the tickets? The cost actually goes from just $100 straight to $800. Mm -hmm. $100 is registration. That's $50 per person or $100 per couple. Mm -hmm. And then you have, if you wish to stay in at the hotel, it will be $300 for one night, $600 for two nights. Mm -hmm. And if you stay at the hotel, of course, that would be plus your registration, um, which will run you into $700. Mm -hmm. And then of course, on Saturday, we have some activities. We have water sports. You either go jet skiing or um, parasailing jet ski is seventy dollars that's per couple and parasailing is a hundred dollars per couple mm -hmm. so then that could take you from if you just want to come to the sessions you can just pay the registration mm -hmm. um you won't be staying at the hotel of course but you'll receive a package mm -hmm. and you'll be at all of the sessions then you um can come and stay maybe for one night which will be three hundred dollars plus the registration mm -hmm. it would take you into four hundred dollars and of course if you want to do the water sports that'll be either seventy dollars or one hundred dollars but i encourage most couples to let's try and do the water sports mm -hmm. if you can't afford it but um we have the various prices because we want to include everybody because everybody's pocket may not be able to accommodate it right. but of course um according to how much you can invest into it um we have from, like I said, 100 straight to $800. I like how you said invest because marriage, when it comes to things like that, that is an investment. Yes. You ain't just put in, you know what I mean? It doesn't make sense that you want to be in something and, and you don't want to invest in it. Right. You know, we value, when we have things of value, we try to put it in the best, the most sacred place. And we try to get the, the most expensive security system and all these other things just to make sure that nothing, um, there's no damage to it, that, that nothing is is broken that everything stays secured and so that's exactly what to me investment is when it comes to your marriage so doing something like this where persons will be able to because it's a retreat mm -hmm. so people will be able to hear what what are they hearing what's happening what are some of the thing topics that you'll be discussing well we'll be starting on on friday night that's going to be starting at 7 p.m um i didn't say that but you also have an option of coming at 6 30 and having dinner and then of course coming to the sessions that will start at 7 30. Mm -hmm. um those sessions will we have a presenter um mr herbert and Karen Marshall, excellent presenters right here from Nassau. Mm -hmm. Nassau Bahamas, a beautiful couple, um, very inspiring. They've, they've been very encouraging to us as a couple and they will be presenting that night. Um, that night will also include closed sessions and of course, interaction. 
and then we come again on Saturday with our water sports. And for, even for persons who are not staying at the hotel, the water sports actually start at 11, 11 a.m. On Saturday. On Saturday. Okay. So if they can't come, they could come for the 7.30 that Friday. And then, of course, on Saturday from 11 to 1. Mm -hmm. That Saturday evening for those persons that will be staying at the hotel, listen, that's totally up to those couples to just listen. You romance him and let him romance you. Okay. That right. is a retreat. Fire. Away from home, fire, fire, fire. <laughs> I love but some it. of I the love some it. of the things that uh would be discussed, you know, they would not they would basically be um talking from their own experience, okay. um, finances, uh how to work together in the marriage. So it's gonna be a number of things that um they're gonna basically be dealing with. And you know, like my wife mentioned in terms of talking about investing in your marriage, you know, uh sometimes we 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 start dating people and we invest, we go for lunch, we go for dinner, we doing everything, we rolling out the red carpet. But then when you get married, you don't want to invest no more. So we want to encourage the Hold It Together Marriage Forum. We want to encourage people to continue to invest in your marriage through mediums like these. Last year, we had what we call the marriage splash. And that was amazing. And this year, we're now um, focusing on a marriage retreat where we get away from home, come away from home, come out and be a part of what's going on. Love your husband, love your wife, enjoy yourself. I love it. Yeah, I invest in that. yourself. Amen. I love it. I love it. What I promised, because you spoke about this the last time you were here, mm -hmm. I promised that I would invest <laughs> in a couple um, yes. to be uh, to attend this particular event. And so what I will do, because we do not have time for a call in, um, mm -hmm. I'm going to allow uh, someone to either WhatsApp the number 3768689. Of course, I would advise that you speak with your spouse first just mm -hmm. to make sure that you are able to make it because right. we've had an incident before where someone called in, got tickets, and the, the husband was unavailable. So we have to go and give the tickets to someone else. So speak with your husband and see, and that's okay if it's, I can, I can go up until tomorrow. See if it's okay that you both have um, the agenda set aside. There's someone to watch your children. Mm -hmm. If you don't have anyone to watch your children, Jerry's babysitting squad is ready for you. Just give them a shout out. I'll send the numbers inside on my Facebook account. But um, this is something that I, I mean, I'm excited. Mm -hmm. I'm excited awesome. about it. I'm excited about the jet ski things. I'm trying to figure out now um, what to do with my weave. Should I wear <laughs> natural hair or what color weave to wear? Because when the wind starts blowing, I got to make sure the wig don't fall in the water. We don't want the shark to take it. So, you know what I mean? So let's see if we can, we're going to get a couple. Um, you can WhatsApp me, 3768689. Let me know that you, it's okay. You and your husband are able to go, and I will give that registration over to you so that you can have a wonderful time and you can invest in your marriage thank yes. you so much mr and mrs allen thank you for being present i'm mm -hmm. excited um any parting words before we go i would um like to remind us whenever we have something um, I'll, I'll give an example of a car um we have a car we love our car we need our car to get where we're going once we hear a sound in that car we go to the mechanic we don't wait until that car broke down and then we we that's how persons work on their marriage. They wait until it's crashed, okay. until they go and receive counseling. No, you can go re and receive counseling whilst everything is good. Okay. Why? Because all you doing is making sure you're staying on the Amen. right path. Right. And remember, we service our car before it breaks down. Yeah. We have to invest in our marriage. We have to put the work in. Yes. And that's the only way it's going to work. Listen, take care of your marriage even better than you take care of your car Absolutely. or something that you love. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Uh, Not a problem. My wonderful couple. Yeah, we have some shout outs. They say this is the best couple ever. Hey, Auntie and Uncle <laughs> from Nicalia. Nicaela. Yes. Hello, One Nikayla. of my favorite couples. Hey, this is from Lance Wallace. God hey, bless Pastor you all. Wallace. So today's show was brought to you by Airborne Freight and Cargo Services, John Shoe Store and Accessories Family Medicine Center. Those wholesale, your name, life coaching, fusion, superplex. I'm also giving you an opportunity for a divorce individual to give me a call. Uh, WhatsApp 3768689. This is too late if you still want to have those fusion tickets. And Jerry's babysitting services. 
I'm giving you an op option to do that as well because of time, three, seven, six, eight, six, eight, nine. You may need the same babysitting services to go to this That's event right. next weekend. Yeah. Okay. All right. Next week's show is entitled Finding Contentment in Singleness. We have some ladies doing real big things in this country. I'm telling you, um, they're going to be talking about their, you know, the fact that they're, even though they're doing things, you know, it's still some challenges that they may have as being single. Um, they're, but they're not just sitting around waiting for Mr. Right. They're doing things. All right. It takes motion. Um, um, it takes fulfilling purpose, even as you um, mm -hmm. supposed to be waiting. You know, it's sometimes you get married. Sometimes you don't have to be married. You know, sometimes you just do the work right. of the father. It's, mm -hmm. it's, that's, that's up to them. We'll hear what they have to say um, next week. And so I want to thank my guests in their absence, Atrika, CG, and Lernice, and of course, Mr. and Mrs. Allen. I want to thank John Lee Wally ferguson for his patience with me um tony is in here and and mm -hmm. dj beats is in here so wally came from garden radio and he's holding it down now they strict strict over there they strict strict so you notice the holy spirit doesn't one minute there's the holy spirit <laughs> holding him for me right you know that right okay so yeah. thank you very much thank you so much wally god bless mm -hmm. you um, and to my Facebook audience, thank you so much for tuning in. I've seen some new persons um, tune in, and I want to thank you so much. And for those who um, are continuously come caught, um, listening and tuning in, thank you. I appreciate you. And may God continue to bless you. May you continue to share um, what's going on with us every Sunday. It's always something, always something for the ladies. And so please tune in. And um, you can follow the page, Jolene Life Coaching, on Facebook. Where I'll put some more information pertaining to what, was, what they're having next week as well as um, other updates will be going on um, for next week's show. And you can go once again to uh, www.yourlanelifecoaching.com um, for any consultation that you may need for pre-marital -coach, pre coaching or marriage coaching. God bless you. I pray that you all were empowered, educated, and encouraged today. Until next time, have a blessed Sunday, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you to my Facebook audience. God bless you.